Hello everybody, this is Bacter, and welcome to the first and probably longest of the alternate endings to Let's Play I Fell From Grace, a game which I have uh, mixed feelings about, which you may know after my uh, playthrough. This is not the main playthrough, if you are new to this, and I know some of you mostly know me through YouTube, I have linked my uh, screenshot LP in the uh, description of this video. You'll want to read it first, probably, to get the most out of this. Spoilers from here on out. Um, and so I'm assuming that any of you that are left, this is just a refresher course. I've heavily edited uh, the, the game and the playthrough and everything. The first couple days of Henry's last week on the planet, and I guess everybody's last week, unless this is all taking place in his head, it's not clear, um, are, are pretty much the same. They railroad you for the first couple of days. Um, if you remember in the beginning here, we were late to work, we got yelled at, by our boss and our mentor. We refuse to house his animals for him. And then the uh, crazy McGee here shows up with a shopping cart and a lot of promises. We could find the shopping cart later in the in the business where we work. And is that important? I don't know. It seems like maybe it would have been at one point, but I haven't found the ending yet where it is. That said, there's a lot of branch points. So, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. Uh, we talked a little bit in the thread about just a whole bunch of stuff having to do with, with Henry. Would we feel differently about him if he was competent or if he was you know, skilled in any number of other ways? Would we feel differently about him if he didn't rhyme all the time in the worst possible way imaginable? Um, hard to say, but in the way that he is portrayed in the game, he is just a real, just, just the worst. Nobody, nobody likes Henry. Um, except Grace, apparently. Here she is, going to carry a big heavy box while pregnant up the uh, stairs of a house that she didn't want. It falls on her and she has a miscarriage. And Henry blames her. That is specifically pointed out in the author's website. So, you know, that's cool, uh, I guess. I am doing these playthroughs as sort of a minimal playthrough. It's, it's a little impressive to me how much of the game, when you really look at it, is um, not required is is uh, just secondary stuff and like all the interactions we had with everybody in the office almost uh, and and almost everybody downtown are all pretty much uh not required i mean you can bang through this game in about an hour it took me about an hour and a half to do this particular playthrough um so that's probably what we're looking for and i'm i'm there's the potential for the story to be very interesting if you remember the pill that we got maybe maybe Grace a, a demon, I think. Either that or... Like, the apocalypse happened and gave her powers, and this is the... This is the, the fate she chose for us, you know, to relive the best week of our lives over and over again while learning nothing, and just have her suffer for all time? I don't know. Look, I'm not gonna tell you how to do the apocalypse, Grace. I'm sure you know what's what. I mentioned in the thread that there were some times when having an item or not having an item would really change things, and the only time that's really true is if weapons, uh, having the pipe lets us do various things. Uh, if you remember, second day we got going on here, um, we were tasked initially to find out what a, a song was, it's Doris chopping up people. This is how the game railroads us into finding out that Doris is a bit of a psycho murderer, and our non-response to this is one of the... Um, places where the game cut... It really lost me here first, I remember. Because Henry's response, which is just nothing, is so different from what mine would have been and what anybody reasonable would have been. Like, everyone that finds out about Doris is afraid of her, which makes sense, but then also figures that the best thing to do is just ignore it and hope it goes away, even if she's actively targeting them, which doesn't make a lick of sense to me. Um, anyway... Uh, we find the professor of ancient linguistics that this pharmaceutical company is uh, employing. And uh, that's because we got a message with some secret spooky writing on it, along with the pills. Uh, you may remember that we've already given a pill to Stinky Pete at this point in time, I think. Um, and we gave the letter to Ancient Languages Guy because we're kind of interested in what it says. And we're interested in what it says because the, the crazy lady seems like she ac accurately predicted Doris. Uh, so, you know, the, the story reasonably ties together so far, unless you take the broader sense of what's actually happening. I left this whole section in here because after we found out about Doris and after we refused to, like, tell anyone that she was singing in exchange for a lot of money, a couple thousand dollars, I thought, 
Uh, we then basically confronted her with the fact that she was a uh, murderess in exchange for a roast beef sandwich. We need the roast beef sandwich to get the ladder. We need the ladder to get the RC tree out of the uh, RC plane out of the tree. I might have just climbed it rather than angering a murderess, but you know, whatever hey, you do, you Henry. We of course leave the ladder there forever, and uh, all of this was to bribe the linguistics guy into translating the page for us, and you know, it's, it, we we progress onwards from there. As I say, um, it's not. The characters behave strangely, I'll say that, um, at the very least. And, uh, by the way, since this is spoilerific, I have no idea what is going on with Michael the Angel here. Like, if the kids are good, if the kids are bad, the kids seem to be us, like our kids, um, that are, you know, kept alive in some representation, I guess, by grace. And maybe the angel is a, a separate supernatural force? Like, I, I like the idea that there might be kind of cracks in this, that, like, her control over this uh, week of torment for us is kind of slipping, or it's, she said it's iterated for millions of years, so that, like, you might build up some flaws in it. Maybe the crazy... Um, yep, yep, there's the, there's the guy who hung himself. Maybe the, the uh, crazy... Um, uh, lady with the shopping cart somehow like knew what was coming had some kind of a premonition the occult store owner might have had some kind of a premonition something like that i don't know it's uh, it's an interesting thing but they really don't explore much of all and hey what did we just find out stinky pete who that we gave a pill to is just leapt down the street clicking his heels um i really wish they handled the medicine thing better like i wish we spent more time trying to figure out what it was or at least trying to do something which would have made a little bit of sense uh i think i edited her out earlier so this is our next door neighbor mrs jones who's just uh doesn't have much respect for the sanctity of marriage and is also uh very physically needy for us for some inexplicable reason so here finally after all that is the first branch point of the game. Uh, at this point, we can either offer Grace a tablet or say we need to do more research. So in this playthrough, um, I went after a particular ending. I wanted to see this is an ending that has you do something with the skull of Zanzibar, and I wanted to see what we could do with it. I'll tell you right now, I'm a little disappointed, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, so the two things that really make this one kick off are we uh, give Grace the pill, and then we have the affair. Um, not something I did in my main playthrough, but I figure we were horrible enough with Henry already. Uh, you know, fine. Sure. Yeah, he seems unsure about it, but, uh, sure. Oh, away we go. I don't know if at this point we could actually go upstairs and cancel the thing and just go to sleep with Grace or something like that, or, you know, if Mrs. Jones is already, uh, at this point. Never have seen this house before this playthrough. I never did have the affair. So, uh, yeah, we keep on being classy, Mrs. Jones. I'm gonna say right away, the way that they handle this is, is how I would have how I would have wanted it to happen. I'm happy with it. Yep. And... <laughs> yeah, Henry is a vastly disappointing lover, as you have guessed. And away he goes. Uh, he's, he's a, he's a one-minute man, is old Henry. And that's how I would have wanted it. That's, I'm, I'm, I would not would have wanted this to happen at all, but if it had to happen, I'm glad it was just disappointing for all concerned. That's, uh, that's what I like. So, yeah, um, they're talking about the endless hallways, the week that never ends, so obviously we know that's a little bit, uh, better. I, I, I kind of don't like like, the kids are, uh, I guess are kids, but also obviously evil for, like, part of the game. Um, there's a whole bunch of little things. Like, Grace made a big deal in the first day of the game that she could always hear us if we were downstairs or something like that. Uh, and then here we come to find out uh, she apparently either lets it go or just, you know... Like, we're going to lie here in a second and say, oh, I, I, I was falling asleep downstairs, whatever. Um, like, she didn't know, even though they really, really set up for us that she would know. And maybe, you know, 
I don't know. Maybe she's just too distracted by feeling better or something like that. Anyway, here she is having the dreams that are going to make her go insane. So with anything that's an endless loop like this, you do have to wonder what the start of it was. Like, really, are these, like, time loop pills? Did, did a, a pharmacy gypsy send us these? Um... Did they somehow put Armageddon into a pill? Is it supposed to be a metaphor for something? You know, maybe the en endless continuance or something? Anyway, whatever. Um, the, the one thing that happened now was we want to test out our theory. Grace seems better. Stinky Pete seemed better. We want to test that out on some animals. So we called our mentor, but he won't let us have the animals. Um, and this is something that I kind of don't like that the game does. I, I didn't actually make, uh, know the, how this was going to happen, but, like, things are different if you take different choices in the game, but they don't really, um, make sense that they're different. Like, you don't change something that then changes other things. We had an affair with Mrs. Jones, and so now instead of wanting cocaine, the secretary just tells you to find Dave the IT guy. Well, okay, but why doesn't she want, like, nothing made her not want cocaine. Anyway, uh, instead of finding Dave, we need to talk to the crying woman, who we've never been able to talk to before. Um, seems odd, but, you know, whatever. I guess you would just talk to everyone in the game until you found her. One of the themes of this one is... It's hard to know how these chains of logic worked. I think my main playthrough had a lot tighter logic. Anyway, this lady now is opening up to us and is apparently Dave's wife. There's a ton of choices you can make here. And so I pick a particular one. You have to lie to her and keep the lie going. Um, and in particular, lie to her that you're a private investigator. Yeah. Hope she doesn't see your Lieberman badge, you dope. Oh, he's probably something similar to this. I like uh, when you keep the lie going here. I actually really like this. Uh, He's just, oh, uh, I'm really good, but uh, I just so many clients, I couldn't possibly keep them straight. Yeah, all right. I mean, you know, she's in consulate and really wants someone to look after her husband, so maybe she has a reason to go along with us or whatever, but uh, it, that's fine. Okay, so Dave was crazy, uh, wanted to do hard drugs... Yeah, that's good. And phone calls. We know a little bit about phone calls. Uh, the lunch lady in this place of work. And honestly, I, I, it kind of bums me out because as soon as she says lunch lady and phone calls, we know exactly what happened to Dave. Uh, I mean, we don't, but, you know, he's... Uh, and, and like a, I don't know if he seems delusional. You know, Henry, you know the game railroaded us into knowing that Doris is murderous. Like, that's not whatever. That's nothing. Anyway, um, so now we have to find his key. And again, I, I think I said uh, before that, like, the chains of logic that you have to do to complete this particular storyline, just not really tight. Um... So, this, she, uh, this lady, by the way, lives in the apartment complex where we uh, have spent a lot of time. We have never been able to go into her room before because she was just crying out on the front stoop. And, you know, before we were tasked with finding Dave, um, it was never exactly clear, you know, I don't know, what she wanted. Notice, by the way, that the radiators in the building now, and this is true for all of them, have the steam or heat or something like that coming out of them. That's, uh... That's interesting and will play a role later. Yep. That is true. So, uh, what you actually have to do is go back to the Lieberman building, where you, I guess you do know Dave works, uh, and go to the trash can outside of the lunchroom. I don't... I think maybe you can get somebody to gossip about that or something. Whatever. Actually, Dawn references finding this key in the other playthrough. Like, this is the one that she gives me. Uh, when I get her the cocaine. Now, why she didn't find it in this playthrough, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you get to work earlier if you don't have the affair. Maybe it makes some sense. It just doesn't seem a lot to me. And there's nothing telling you that you have to go to that trash can. So again, you might just look at literally everything in this huge, huge game. Um, 
Notice that the entire stinking place is purple, which is, you know, meaningful for some reason, I suppose. Purple just means something having to do with the main plot, I think, in general. Anyway, Dave's notebook is flashing at us, so that's, uh... Yep, we know. We knew from day one there was no, uh, doubt about what it was. It's, uh, Doris, so... And, you know, I don't know if she has a, a grudge against him, because he's on to her about all the murders and stuff like that, which we also are, so Doris is for sure gunning for us. Not that that ever really seems to come up too much. Uh, yeah. See, he even kind of references it there that we know that Doris is a murderess, but, uh, you know, this doesn't really seem to be something that we care about. Anyway, um, I, I hadn't explored this room yet. It's kind of, they put a lot of effort into the environments. I mean, I like all them. They're all fun to look at. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that broken mirror. I don't know if that's a metaphor. Maybe it is. Or maybe it just Dave was alcoholic or something like that. I don't know. So you can come back to her all the time and give her some clues and stuff like that. Um, yeah. It doesn't really matter because we knew exactly what to do. She doesn't give us anything. She doesn't, you know, uh, so we head over to Doris's cafe, and we probably should have looked in here before because we knew it was going to be interesting because we know about Doris. Um, it looks kind of like a neat place, though. Yeah, I, I suppose she might have struggled with people before killing them. I think she's more of a stab first and ask questions never kind of person. Yeah, I don't know. I think she's living out her dreams right now. And, uh, oh, what do we have here? A basement doorway that's been bricked up that smells like death. Hmm. Hmm. Portable CD player. Of the kind that Dave used to use. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just, it's just odd because they really seem to be trying to, like, draw out this mystery. Like, ooh, what's gonna happen to Dave? Anyway, we can go back to, uh, to Dave's wife, but that doesn't matter. What we actually need to do is go to the basement of the apartment building and, uh, see him misspell wretched. He spelled wretch there. Uh, but find that the door is locked. Okay, we had no reason to do that. We probably should have gone back to her, but she doesn't tell us anything. Now we go up to the fourth floor and this door is ajar somehow. And hey, look at that! We see a dead person, uh, with those same fumes coming off of him. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what the mysteries are gonna be. Uh, we could probably just go to her now and tell her that, you know, that, the, that Dave's dead and she should run away. Yeah, so the in this playthrough, another thing is different, which is that the apartment is actually heated, which is, you know, lovely. Um, and now we have to ask, we have to go up to this room because we have to ask this guy about the basement door. So, that's the only thing. Yeah, so, uh, here we go. She'll, uh, Hill? Sure, it was a she. Well, uh, we'll talk to us if it's on his nephew, Joey. So, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was people, my dude. Sorry. Sorry if you thought that it wasn't people. Anyway, this horrible flop house. Maybe these are the people that murdered the, uh, the happy party people from before. It might have been, you know, these tweakers. Man, that's a creepy looking face. Boy, you've got some, uh, some, some sympathy for that guy. And again, Henry just looking at things and getting sad. Oh, no happy moments around this dinner table. Got a real chemist in here, though, apparently. Yeah, no reason to get in there. Maybe we could use some wire or screws. Maybe you could pick a lock or something be useful for once. But no, we gotta go down, and uh, we've seen this door before. This is the door with plants outside of it. Um, your nephew that have come to see you. I guess that could be a guy. That could be a guy or a lady. I'm just not sure which. Either way, now we can get in to see the super. Uh, I guess it's a, I guess it's a guy. I went through my first playthrough assuming it was an old lady. So. And of course we're just going to exploit this old man, this old black man, by pretending to be his nephew. <sighs> yeah. All right. 
So there we go, the window is stuck open and that's why he's turned up the temperature so that he doesn't, you know, get gout. Yep. I don't know, because I want to go. Yeah, okay. Obviously it takes a really good... Everything has to be sad. Everything is just super depressing 24-7. That's how it goes. Obviously, it takes a lot of good care of everything. Um, I guess people are just saying mega cusses outside the window 24-7. That's the real world, Dad. <laughs> um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And photo albums. Um... Yeah, you're a real, uh, uh, real, real historian there, Harry. So, um, maybe you can guess what to do next. Maybe you can't. Uh, the super's fallen off asleep. We could probably pick his pocket and get the key right now. But, uh, no, that's not the Henry way. That doesn't make enough people sad. Instead, we've got to put together all the clues that we have now. Instead of just going to Dave's widow and telling him, I'm sorry, your husband's dead. No, no, no. We're going to the furnace room. And we're going to uh, break one of the laws of adventure games, I'm afraid to say, which is we pound on the furnace, it does nothing, we just keep on pounding, just knock our fist against it, I think five times, four or five, four times, knock a cog loose, and uh, now there's no heat in this apartment in the middle of winter. So, you know, I mean, it's it's at least a very, very cold autumn turning to winter. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess so. We know that it's not badly, uh, we, we know that it's not well insulated. We know that a lot of people here are living in poverty. So rather than being mad, I think they'll just be, yep, look at that, dead. Just dead. F five minutes later. Yeah, I wonder too. I don't think you can give the super a mystery pill. That's not something you can do. And you still can't close the window. So anyway, boy, that gout's sure nasty. Um, so now we have the key. Now we can get in. And, uh, you know, any guesses as to what we're uh, gonna find? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see. Hey, what do you know? It's a dead guy. It's old, uh... Old Dave. We got his work, ba work badge. So at this point, the game thoroughly does not care about Dave's widow anymore. <sighs> yeah, don't don't say stuff like that. So we have the key card for the third floor at this point. There's nothing stopping us from just ignoring Dave's widow forever. But even I couldn't quite do that on this playthrough. Let's go. And just uh, let's tell her the truth. Let's be let's be honest with her. That's right. What a good way to say it. What a good way to tell people. Jeez, Henry. Good night. Yeah, okay. Well, off we go. Thanks, lady. Hey, do you want to date me sometime? Goodness knows I don't take care of my wife. Uh, one more stop off here. We gotta pick up the fishing pole. Another one of those gotta have items, which is sequestered way, way back at the very back of the world where many people are going to miss it forever. Anyway, back to work. Uh, now we know what to do, same as before, now that we have the key. We can just uh, short out the cameras on the uh, third floor. We will take our bad selves up, and here we are in the room. Now, this time, we are uh, going to do something different. We'll try to deal with Harris in a different way. If you recall, this is where he caught us. We tried to fight him. We got thrown out, and then we had to murder him by putting cleaning solvent into his coffee. Um, so, let's see if a different tactic works at all. Let's try to bribe him. Notice we can't try to fight him. That's interesting. And it works. So, okay. Another one of those again brain rhymes. But, you know, regardless, 
uh, yeah, he just lets us go. We don't need our money, we don't need a watch. So, uh, that's a perfectly viable solution, and much easier to do. Notice we haven't actually killed anybody yet, uh, which is super interesting. I mean, well, okay, excuse me. We haven't physically murdered someone. We did kill the super, um, but that was, you know, through other actions and stuff like that. So we get our blood sample, and we go uh, mess with the blood tester now, but as we know, we're going to want two blood samples, so rather than do that, let's uh, just head home. Grace is up and about. She's still somewhat sane at this point in time, not able to make dinner. Although the nightmares are starting to get to her, I assume they're much, much worse than what we're going through. Either that, or she's, you know, kind of a good person. Person, and so she doesn't like seeing everybody just get obliterated by demons or whatever the heck happens. It's a very vague kind of apocalyptic scenario, and I actually don't mind that. Kind of in the tradition of Lovecraft or uh, some of the Stephen King type things, a lot of the levers that are being pulled behind the scenes by these supernatural forces are vague. Now I do wish we had a little bit better of an idea what was going on with like the kids or with the angels or the demons. Uh, you know, who knows if they're uh, consistent beings throughout the whole thing, or whatever. I, I could have cut out this conversation, but I left it in because I just want to remind everybody that Henry does not give two craps what his wife thinks. Uh, he, she is along because she is a part of his ideal life. Um, like, loving somebody, I think, is a part of who he wants to be. But that is entirely different from who she is or what she wants. Like, he doesn't give a crap about that. Um, just another thing what makes him great. So look, now like the kids are blending together. Even in retrospect, I have no theory for what this means. Uh, I, I don't know. And they're all, like, they're, they're either being kids who are like, Oh, I'll miss you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Or they're uh, freaky. You know, they're talking about cannibalism, and they're, like, ripping open your psychiatrist's chest. Which, why wouldn't they want to be talked about? Are they... Do they want the apocalypse to happen? Do they not? Because they seem sad when it does. But, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, we are... Uh, you'll notice that this playthrough, in particular, is not the most divergent. Uh, we've now... We have to go through a lot to get this blood analysis machine to work. I cut a lot of that out. We have to go find it, try to use it. It doesn't work. We have to go back downstairs and get the, uh, the manual for it. So, yeah. It's a spooky language. Spits out another paper, and it turns out everything works, and no one will question it. Everything's great. Um, <laughs> because that's how pharmacy works in this world. Uh, anyway, so... Give it to, uh... Give it to Dr. Richards, I suppose. Obviously, our career is really on a string here. You know, they do a decent job. I would have changed a few things, but they do a decent job of pushing the desperation angle. As in, like, we're real close to losing our life and, and getting fired and just being out on our ear, as far as this goes. Uh, but we're just barely hanging on, which does give us some real impetus to continue. Uh, anyway... The one thing we have been paying no attention to is the health of Grace, who, of course, is going downhill in a real hurry. So, with, uh, you know, it would make us look bad if, if something happened to her. After all, she's the one that uh, is like our test case. So, uh, she's locked the front door, we pull the ladder down with the, uh, the fishing hook, we enter in through our bedroom, these little scamps run off. They're not merged into one awful being. We're talking about cannibalism, so maybe that's different. Uh, notice that we still really haven't heard a whole lot about the black spots in the ceiling. Now, there was black goo that dripped out of the uh, vents when Grace turned into a demon, so maybe that was that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the black spots. Somebody pointed out that the ceiling is totally black because it's a, you know, video game kind of thing. I guess they could be going for some fourth wall kind of breaking. It's as likely as anything else at this point. But, uh, yeah, you've had quite the day, Henry. Better sleep in your clothes again for the fifth time in a row or whatever. Notice again that, uh, normally there would be a dead body over on the left there, and it would be who we've killed. Uh, but because we haven't directly killed anybody again, excepting the super, uh, we just get a, a sample corpse. 
Skybrush three point score or something. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's actually more the hero from uh, So You Want to Be a Hero. I guess we murdered him or something. So, yeah, okay. You're doing, you're doing great, lady. Anyway, we get a phone call, and uh, I think we all know where this is heading. We finally get our comeuppance. We say that we're going to rub it in our boss's face. Uh, we absolutely check it out and do not do that, because Harry does not have any kind of courage, in addition to the other negative qualities that he does possess. Uh, we can go back up and check on our wife, but uh, I don't think Henry would do that. We're just going to be moseying on along. And uh, there's one more real divergence here. We are again going to select not telling people. Again, I was going for one specific ending. Um, so, yeah, we're going to keep it, uh, stay quiet about the nightmares, which is fine. Uh, we kind of know where that's going. And if you recall last time, we got a call from Harris's mom telling us that he had been planning on blackmailing us. That actually never comes up. I guess he forgot about it, or he tried to go to our boss, and our boss said, shut up, that's our cash cow, I'm not having you talk bad about him, like I knew would happen. Uh, something like that. But, um, no, we've got a different crisis this time. This time it's Mrs. Jones, or Miss Jones, I guess. Yep, Henry's a real peach. And you can tell that even Miss Jones is taking it back. Now, we might guess that she's staring out into the horrors that she knows is coming, the coming apocalypse or something like that, but, uh, you know, maybe she's going to take it out on Miss Jones first. Maybe her precognizance means that she gets to know things. This, what's going to happen right here, I, you can't enter the house, and, uh, that, I think, is a bug, because uh, I don't, that doesn't fit with this scene. Like, there's no policeman out there. I thought maybe, like, the policeman had failed to load in, and maybe Grace had murdered Miss, Miss Jones or something like that. No, it turns out that was just a glitch. The game isn't really full of those. First one of those I found, but still. Uh, now you can see Grace is fully going around the bend. She's turning into a demon, or trying to suppress it, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, here they go. I don't think there's any special dialogue you get from the psychiatrist if you leave him alive, as in, if you don't tell him about the kids. I should try that in a playthrough, uh, just to see if you get anything for saving his life. Whatever. Anyway, uh, Grace is sort of in a bad way. Uh, I think he will be allowed to keep his spine, actually. He just goes, Hello, Henry! That's sort of his last thing. I love that kitty cat. That is the, that is the sweetest thing. A little sweetie. Um, so yeah, Grace has now been moved into the medical trial ward. Nobody really seems to think it's a problem that she's obviously going fully, fully insane. Uh, you know, they're going to keep producing the miracle pill no matter what. Kind of makes me wonder what would happen if they had managed to mass produce the miracle pill and give everybody one. Would everybody become an omnipotent demon? Is Stinky Pete somewhere an omnipotent demon? Um, I know you can get an early game over, as in a non-standard or death type game over, if you give one of the pills to uh, the Czar. That's the the punk that uh, we ended up. I think we did we bribe him. We tried to anyway. Uh, you can also murder him with the pipe. Uh, you can also give him a pill, and I think you get a bad game over. Uh, like, I think he just kills you at some point if you give him a pill. Presumably he goes insane. Maybe we'll see that at some point. Whatever. Anyway, there she goes screaming in Babylonian, which again, everyone's like, oh, she's stressed. It'll be okay. Don't worry. You know, sometimes when people feel stressed, they either scream in something which could be Japanese or Aramaic. It's, it's hard to say. Anyway, uh, if you recall earlier, I said I was very sure that Grace had not murdered Miss Jones, and that's because down in the lobby, here she is, and I, you know, uh, this is sort of your last choice of the game right here, because what's she doing here? Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know... You had no reason to think this was going to go well, had we? Um, yeah. I, I, you, I'm sure you were a debutante. I see. 
And again, I don't know why you can't have her make a scene. Like, again, if... I, I don't even think that Harris's thing would have sunk you. For sure, some crazy lover. Like, security would obviously escort her out of the building. Um, and, you know, I think the police could deal with her or something. Anyway, no, you pretend like you're gonna be with her. And, oh, let's just slip down to the reactor room. Oh, my darling, the reactor room. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get a blanket. Okay, that sounds cool. Anyway, uh, gonna activate this control panel on the reactor? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, this wasn't available to us before. We could never press this button before down here at the reactor. I didn't know what this room was for. Uh, it turns out it's for, for doing this. For, uh, murdering a spurned lover. Now, I thought she was just gonna flash fry or something. That's all we do. But as you might expect from a big nuclear reactor, it's not, like, great to be in that room. Uh, yeah, go for it. You, you pretend to be shocked. Well, it's because we just fried you. Yeah. Sorry, Miss Jones. Ooh. What? That's our solution? That's what we think is, is gonna... Anyway, yeah, how are we going to deal with the residual radiation? Well, if you'll recall, we found out at one point, and I am not making this up, that the, uh, the chem suit here in the video store downtown, the hazmat suit, is real. Uh, notice that this is the first dialogue. I've never talked to this kid before. I'm not doing any of the optional things. So, um, yeah... Okay, Henry. Let's t take it easy. Uh, yeah, he wants something really cool. And I'm... I, I, he talked a whole bunch about how he liked uh, astronomy and was saving up for a telescope, so it really seems like you should give him the telescope that you can find. It really seems like you should, but no. It's the skull. Come on, this kid is like... I don't know. It's got to be 15 or 16, right? Yeah, I mean, a skull is cool for sure, but, uh, you know, yep, that's what we did. That's what we did. We traded the cursed skull of Zanzibar for a hazmat suit, and now we're wearing a hazmat suit so we can go pick the next door neighbor that we murdered with a nuclear reactor out of the chamber that she's in. I guess nobody's gonna be there. Also, by the way, you can't run in this. Is there a reason for that? Not that I can determine. Uh, there's nothing, like, there's no time limit, so making you walk doesn't hurt anything. The only thing I can think is literally he didn't want to make two moving animations for this thing, a walking and a running. He just wanted to make a walking animation. I just wanted to stop in, by the way, to the store clerk and make sure that, uh, you know, she doesn't seem to mind you being in your hazmat suit, so that's cool. I wonder what else you could do in your hazmat suit. That's an excellent question and one that I want to investigate. Like, could you go through the, uh, the door? Like, could you unlock the door with all of your keys and go to the other world and get, uh, Grace's necklace in there? Could you go to your therapist and, like, have a, have a discussion? I should try some other things with the hazmat suit, but it's just... You know, I left this sequence in, even though I've been cutting out a lot of other stuff. Just to show you that, like, late in the game, I mean, I know they're trying to, like, make you feel, sort of, that things are moving slowly and having a rough time, and, you know, it's frustrating. But, like, this is a little over the top, as far as I'm concerned. And, like, if you're worried about people seeing you, I mean, here you are, walking down the street in a hazmat suit in front of a pharmaceutical company. You don't think that's going to raise any eyebrows? You don't think anybody's going to be uh, wondering what you're doing? And what's our plan once we get her body? Are we going to, you know, it's not nighttime. Are we going to dispose of her in Doris's kitchen or something like that? Are we going to, uh, goodness knows. I mean, I'm sure Henry thinks he has a good idea, but like... Anybody that sees us is going to wonder where we're going and what we're doing, and we know there's people just a little bit farther down the hallway. So, uh, good luck, I guess. 
Yeah, I said the game kind of makes a few jumps that are hard to follow. This whole playthrough has been real weird. We've had uh, the whole deal with Dave, which is just seems like this weird side. Like, yeah, okay, I guess we're just going to wait in here now. That's fine. Like, everything just seems like an unnecessary side diversion, really. And in a way that, like, it wasn't even organically fit together as much as the regular plot was, which was still pretty jarring sometimes. But, you know, seeing Henry take Miss Jones down to the reactor and flip on the reactor core was definitely one of the most, like, what moments that I've experienced. It's up there with, uh with black veiling uh, doors to get her sandwich. And like, okay, we have a shovel, I guess. So we're going to, like, I thought maybe at first the thing to do was to go up and put her in that big vat of chemicals up on the fourth floor. Uh, like, maybe that would be the final use for it. Nope, can't, still can't do it, can't interact with it. Uh, you just put her down in the back of this building, in the back of this company, where anybody could look out a back window at any time and see you in a hazmat suit digging a grave? Like, this is your solution to not being seen? I mean, I guess everyone's gone home, but, like, also that grave is super obvious. Ugh. Where'd you put the suit? I guess you buried it with her, but, like, people are gonna see the grave, Henry. This isn't a good long-term or short-term solution. Anyway, the rest of the game is identical. You go home, you wake up to demons, you come back and uh, talk to Grace. That's this playthrough. Uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bactor out.